Welcome to the Living Word, the teaching ministry of Pastor Fisayo Adeniyi, lead pastor of the Ransomed House Lagos. Get ready for enlightenment, encounter, and impartations by the Word. Be blessed as you listen. And then verse 10, 1 Peter chapter 4, and then verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 4, and then verse 10. 1 Peter 4, and then verse 10. I want to begin a journey here today that I believe would help us. I'm going to be saying some things that um, I'm going to be saying some things very calmly, very. If you have the King James version, it will work better, or the New King James version. First Peter four ten one two three go. As each one has received a gift. Minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Amen. For a few minutes today, I'm going to be sharing understanding kingdom stewardship. Understanding kingdom stewardship. Shall we pray? Father, thank you. Because the entrance of your word gives light, it gives understanding unto the simple. A simple folks, we've come today to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer, Lord. And I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. Lord, as we begin a journey into you today, let us see you. Let us begin to walk with an understanding that you alone is our God. Father, we have nothing except that which we have received of you. We own nothing except that which you have given us. Father, let us walk with you appropriately. Let us have the right attitude as it concerns even your endowment, your giftings, and your skills. Thank you, Father. Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, understanding, kingdom stewardship. Have your seat in God's presence. All right. Can I begin by saying that the word of God is the standard for living? The word of God is the standard for living. If you are going to live wisely, then you must live by the dictate of the word of God. Can I say that to someone again? The word of God is the standard for living. And if you are going to live wisely, then you must live in accordance with the word of God. I'm trying to say that the scripture is our model for living. The scripture is our model even for living. Amen. However, we will not get things from God. We will not get things the way we are supposed to get them. Except we understand the power of the written word. Except we understand what is written in scripture. Alright, so I've discovered that many of us, and many people carry the Bible around. Do have your attention? Many people carry the Bible around, but few of us understand what the Bible says. Allow me to say to you that the Bible is God's manual for your life. In as much as you have an attitude of still arguing to the practicality of the Bible, then you will not live in the reality of of what God promised you. I've met people who say, you know, I believe that word is of, of, from the Bible, but I don't believe what it says. It's not going to work in our time. It's not practical. And in as much as people say that, they do not live in the promise and the fullness of God's word. I love when people say I'm a practical person and I love practicality. And I say the same house. But listen to this. We cannot judge the spiritual by the practical. Actually, the spiritual is what determines the practical. Therefore, what you see is what you call the practical. What you can undo, what you can practice. But the standard of the word changes, but God's word remains even the same. In understanding the Bible, three things are very key. Follow me very closely. Three things are key in understanding the Bible. First one is the Bible has three expressions, three variations of scriptures. What you have known as Logos and Rema. But today I want to tell you there are three expressions of Bible. Three. Are you following me? You are going to have value for time that you came to church. I'm going to break some things down very neatly to you. I'm not going to go fast because I don't even have the strength to go fast. Hallelujah. I'm just going to go as I can go. Sit back and enjoy God's word. The first one is the word graphy. G-R-A-P-H-E. Is the word graphic. That's the first expression of the Bible. Is the word graphic. And that word means what is written. 
what is written. What is already written there. That's what the word graphy means. It is where you get the word scripture from. Because scripture is written. So many of us came to church today with graphic. That means you came with a Bible. You came to church with a Bible, raise your Bible. What you are carrying is a graphic. All right, some of us have it on our hearts. And we open it and we read it. What you are reading is what is written. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, and then 2 Timothy chapter 3 and then verse 16, the Bible says all scripture, that word all scripture is given. That word all scripture there is talking about graphic. That means it's already written. It's, it's written. You don't do anything about it. It's a body of knowledge. So the Bible is a body of knowledge, a body of information. You can't say, oh, that information is uh, actually spiritual, but it is an information. It's a body of knowledge. That's what that word graphic, that's what it means. It means something written. Uh, and also you have the second variation, which is the word logos. Logos. Uh, logos is what you are used to. You've heard the word logos before. Uh, logos is said to be the written word. But actually, what the word logos, I used to preach a message talking about the spirit behind the word. What the logos talks about, logos is not just the written word. Logos talks about the spirit behind the written word. Somebody follow me. So if I say, thou, if I say, everybody rise. Now, to do what I say is to obey. But to understand why I said what I said is the logos. So logos is not what you read. Logos is understanding the spirit behind the letter. Why is it that God gave the commandment? Why is it that God said, thou shalt not kill? Why is it that I can understand the intent of God? Because you see, if you understand the intent of every command, then you are able to honor the command better. For instance, if I say, don't drive my car, and then I travel and I give you the key, and then you want to go and see your girlfriend, you are going to take the car. But if I tell you don't take the car out because the engine oil is little and the car will break down. You are never going to do that. You know why? Because you don't want the car to break down. Because now you understand why I gave what I gave. So Logos is the content of what is written, yeah? But it is understanding what is written and the meaning of every word. That's what Logos is. That's what Logos is. So there is graphe. Don't worry, you have come to a Greek class because I'm just starting with you. So there is graphic. There is what? What's the second one? Talk to me. Logos. And then there is the third one, what you call Rema. Rema is understanding what this word, what does it mean to my life? That's why it's called revelation. So I am reading the Logos. I'm reading, I'm reading the graphic, what is already written. Then I understand what is written. That is Logos. But then when I now know what it means in my practical situation, that means I get something personal to work with for my life, then I receive a rema. That is why you will hear people say, I read John 3, 16, and then they say I receive a rema because God gave me an instruction from that place. But you have been reading John 3, 16, and you can explain it because you understand the Logos. So you understand it. It's not a rema for you, but it is a Logos because you understand it. So there are three dimensions. There is the first dimension of what is written. It is the graphic. There is a second dimension which is generic, which is the logos. Having an understanding of what is written. And we pray for understanding of scriptures. We pray that whatever we read, we understand it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, but there is now that third dimension which is greater than the logos. It is now that I need a wife. It is now that I need a job. Now that I need to make a move. What is that rema for me? And in all of these places, what ensures that you move from graphy even to logos and even to rema? That's why it's not every time you read scriptures that you receive a rema. For every time you read scriptures, you should have a logos. You should have an understanding of what is written. But it's not every time that you receive a rema. It's not every time that God speaks to you because the primary way God speaks to believers is through his word. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when God gives you that personal word now, it becomes a rema for you. It becomes a rema. But what ensures that those three places moves together is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus says, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The Bible says the letter profit nothing but the spirit. It gives life. So what I'm about to share with you 
That's just foundation, all right? That's just like um, that for those who are for us to go to the next level. We will need the power of the Holy Spirit to get us into understanding. If we can pray in the Spirit, can we take one minute? Let's just take a prayer break. Let's take a tongues break. Can you pray in the Spirit one minute? When I say pray in church, I don't like when you pray silently. This is not your room. Uh. This is God's house. Uh. This is your father's house. Uh. Open your mouth and pray. Vilano Frekelia. Zembali Calibra Dozakataya. To receive a rema this morning, uh, you will need the Holy Spirit to breathe upon uh, even every word that I speak. Baluke Velida of Raditile Klato Sabia Dabasia. Revalo Bracale Kaye Kayagado Bracalea. Veno Veno Zambali Bla Cocoboli Adiava Satan. Masona Macapa Leprosi Akia Tatava. Evra Cole Kaida Vasa Kataya Vasa. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name and amen. Thus, when a person comes to church, he carries the Bible. When they carry Bible, they carry graphe. When they hear a pastor preach, they are hearing the logos because understanding comes. But in order to apply it to their lives, that takes the word of the Spirit by providing the rhema. What does it mean? First Peter chapter 4, verse 10. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. As good stewards, two things are key in that verse. Uh, it says, as each one. It doesn't mean that, um, he said, as each one. It's not as some people. He said, as each one. So everyone has received. Do you understand that? As each one has received a gift. So everyone, no matter how you look, no matter where you are seated in church, even though you are not doing anything for God, it doesn't matter. Everyone has received a gift. He said, let us minister. As what? Well, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So, we are all supposed to minister. And how are we supposed to minister? As stewards of what? The manifold. That word manifold means multifaceted, multidimensional grace of God. That means that as you look at me, I'm not just an expression of teaching. I also write. That means that I also give counsel. That means that I can lay hands on you and deliver you from demons. Those are dimensions in me that is not from me, but as a source in God. But every one of it are manifold. That means they are plenty. It's not just one. There are many-sided. That's what that word manifold means. Uh, many-sided. So I'm saying that as good stewards, therefore God is responsible for anything that is good in your life. Those, the one you went to learn in school. Because some people went to school, same class, they didn't graduate. Glory. So God is responsible for every of the manifold gifts. The Bible says as good stewards of the manifold gifts of God. What are you supposed to steward? You are supposed to steward God's manifold grace. His blessings upon your life. Now, what does it mean to be a steward? What does it mean to be a steward? Um, um, don't worry, don't go ahead of me. They will just be reading. Even if they don't read it, they will understand it. Today, we gather here. Look at him and say, we gather here. You don't need slides. Today. You just need me. You need the Holy Spirit. Today. Now, as good stewards... Of the manifold grace of God. You see, the word stewards in English does not really explain what the Bible is speaking about. Because you see, the Bible originally was written in the Greek language, that's the New Testament. The Old Testament was written in the Hebrew. Now, many of us have discovered that when pastors teach and preach, Sometimes they say the Greek says, and you think we do that to bamboozle you? You think we do that so that we can show that we went to Bible school? Or we do that so that we can show that we are learned people? Or so that it can be valued for your money? You know, the more complicated they get, the more they respect you in this generation. So you think we say that? But that's not true. Listen, the English language is a lower dimension of language when it compares to the Greek language. It's a lower dimension. 
You see, students of linguistics don't understand what they call dimensions in language. He talks about the phonology. He talks about the semantics. He talks about um, um, the lingual and uh, the grammatic expressions in those words. So, for instance, when I use the word, when you read your Bible, and many of us read scriptures, and you get to the book of John chapter 21, for instance, and you remember that conversation between Peter and Jesus, after Jesus had resurrected. And Jesus asked Peter, say, do you love me? Do you remember that question? Do you love me? And uh, what was Peter's answer? He said, I love you. Okay, okay, so le- let me help you here. Can we have John 21, 15 to 17? On this? So you can write that down if you want. Or if you want to follow me in scriptures, you can. John 21, 15 to 17. So, I think we would have to just be moving between the slides and everything. John 21, are we there? 15 to 17. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? What did Peter say? He said, do you love me more than this? What did Peter say? I can't hear you. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you, he said to him. He said, feed my lamb. Then he asked him the second time, do you love me? It looks like love, love was being talking, spoken about. And why is Jesus speaking like that? If you are just reading the Bible in English, you will say he is repeating it for the purpose of emphasis. Is that not so? And that's what you've always believed. But that's not so. Now, I'm, I'm trying to show you that the language we speak is a lower dimension language uh, when it compares to the Greek. For instance, if I look at you and I say, I love you. Look at Nelson and I say, I love you. Do you think I'm speaking of eros? Or that means I love you sensually. Or do you think I am talking of philio, which is as a friend? Speak to me. Those who are, you've had me teach on eros and, which one do you think I was talking about? Philio. I cannot be erotic, erotic love for him. It's not possible, right? Now, but you see that in English, it's all love. So when I look at him, I say, I love you. Forget it. Whatever you like, think. It can be heroes. I have full-time ability to heroes her. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or do you understand what I'm saying? I say, I love you. And then if I see my sister, and then I say, I love you. That's also a different word. The word there is the word stoge, which is the S-T-O-O-G-E. So if it is in Greek, I say, I stoge you. That's, I'm talking to my sister now. That's love in a family. If I'm talking to my wife, I say, I heros you, right? And I'm talking to her, I say, I feel you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it is, but when the English language interprets everything, what does it say? Everything is love. You can see it's a lower dimension because the expressions are not plenty. They are not so much. So you see, in this scripture, when Peter, when Jesus asked Peter, the first one said, do you love me? That word love there is the word agape. He was asking him, do you agape me? Do you know what Peter said? Peter said, I feel you. you." He was saying, do you, you see the word agape means love that does not, uh, it's, 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 it does, it's unconditional. It it does not, it doesn't look at what you do. It doesn't look at what you express. It just loves you. So Jesus asking Peter, do you agape me? Peter said, Peter replies, I feel you, you. I feel you as a brother. I don't know whether I love you unconditionally. That one is a different thing. And then he said, feed my lamb. Then he asked him the second time, Simon, John of Jonah, do you love me? Still using the word agape. Then he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Still using that word, feel you. To reply. And then the third time he said to him, tend my sheep. Then the third time he then asked Simon, son of Jonah, do you feel you me? That third one was now feel you. He said, do you feel you me? Look at Simon's response. Peter was grieved because he said to him, do you feel you me and he said lord you know all things and you know that i feel you you see i'm not at that level of agape yet but if it comes to feel you then he said well you know all things master when he can come to his level and start asking about feel you then the guy came down and said ah, but you know all things but when he was talking about agape that was not you see you can't see all of that light if you are just reading the bible in the english do you understand what i'm saying 
And that's why there are strong concordance for a teaching church. Where you can then see the difference between words. But that's just, look at your neighbor and say that's um, the layers of the... The first one was appetizer, right? Um, this one we're doing a burger, so that's the first layer. Now let's get the feelings inside. Glory to God. Now I gave you that to help you understand that we want to now talk about the word stewards. Because you, when you find the word steward in scripture, uh, there are two Greek words that means that word. The first one is the word epitropos. I told you you came to a Greek class. After now when you get out of church, you say, ah, ah, it's epitropos, filio. And then you're looking at your graphics, you say, ah, ah, so bright. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, it's the word epitropos. Now, what does that word epitropos, what does it mean? It means one whose honor, whose care or honor something is instructed. That means that, um, can I have that card? You will understand. Today, today, you will understand. All right, so, um, someone unto whom something is instructed, right? So, now else come. One to whose care or honor anything has been entrusted as a guide here, right? So, if I give him this and I say, take this, that is the key to my car. And I say, take care of that car. I am going for four days. I will be back. What I have done is that I have entrusted that car to his care. So, I have given him what you call a petropos. No, I am not collecting. Are you? I don't worry. I might truly be going for four days. <laughs> and so, what is going on is that I have given him what? Epitropos. Do you understand what I'm saying? I've given him Epitropos. He now becomes the steward of that car. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, when I go and I come back, what do you expect? I expect him to give me that car. Even if I say use the car, manage the car well, understand? and take it out. Uh, but just ensure that the car is neat and everything. Now, when he, I come back, and then that brings me the car, and I say, hey, sorry, sir. You see, when I was going on the road, one corrupt just came out like this and bought it. And then, or oh, he entered the car and said, Oh, this is awesome. I start playing his Baba, Elijah level. And he, he, I've given him the car. Is that not so? He's entrusted to his care. So he can, do, can use it for whatever he wants. But if you now start paying that, and then he buys granite, it's not the granite you know. You know the granite epasisi, that one that is good. You know that one that is good that you used to break. You break the granite. And so he breaks it, and then throws it back inside the car. And then he hits it. And then you see banana sellers, ah, <laughs> banana. And then he buys, and then he peels it, puts it inside the car. You know what I'm saying? Then, ah. He now says, oh, ah, watermelon. Put everything inside the car. The car is now dirty, right? Now, that's the car I gave to him. It was his T-Watch. It was his epitropos. That means I had given him to manage that thing. He was supposed to manage it like it is mine. Because it is not his own. I actually just gave it to him. You know what I'm saying? So, go and manage it. Oh, I say, Tophet, come. come. I say, this is yours. For one week, you can play game, you can watch Netflix, you can do anything. It's yours. But in two weeks, I'll come back. Now, I travel. I've considered, I've given him a Petropos of that heart. Just the same way God has given all of us a Petropos. So I gave it to him. And then, if I come back, and I say, ah, me, can I have it? And I'll see that, ah, ah, even the casing is different. Wow. Ah, ah, a good person, oh. Ah, that's wonderful. Pele. Ah, ah. You even change the screen. Ah, ah. Very good, very good. Ah, ah. I didn't know you would do, do this well, oh. Okay, okay, okay. You like it? Say, like, I say, ah, okay. Maybe I will order, or you like the way it was. And I will say somebody should give you an hour. Now, what has happened is that he was a good manager of what? Of, of what I have given. 
That's the word epitropos. Now, if you will help me go to scriptures, let's read Galatians chapter 4. I'll just show you one scripture. If you're taking notes, Matthew 28. But let's see Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. The Bible says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all. But he is under guidance and stewards. Stewards. That means that there are people who are in charge of this person. So understand that that is the word epitropos. Now let's move quickly. The second word is the word ohikonomos. Uh, follow me. All right, don't worry, the spelling is on the board. Somebody is even smiling and saying, we have come today. Oikonomos, you see. Oiko, actually that's, in Greek, there's what we call compound Greek word, right? That means two words mix up this word. I mean, you're dealing English, right? Compound words, two words make up that word. The first word is the word ohiko, and the second one is the word nomos. Don't worry, it will still make sense to you, right? All right, the first one is the word oiko, the second one is the word nomos. Don't worry, you're not going anywhere. All of you stand, right? Oiko is actually means the word house. And then nomos is actually the word distribute. It's where you get the word economy from. You understand? So students of economics will understand the word economos. When they say the, the economy of a country is going bad, what they are saying is that uh, it's failing in economos, which means the manager. Uh, all right, so let's see what that word means apart from uh, the pronunciation. Let's see what that word, what does it mean? Uh, the word economos, what does it mean? He actually means household manager. It means uh, someone who is a manager, who is the head of the house or proprietor, the manager of a farm, an overseer, a superintendent, the treasurer of a city. Now, listen to this. It seems that the word oikonomos and the word epitropos, it seems like they are the same. But there are, there's a difference between the two. The first one is that the word Epitropos has to do with the management of tangible things. So you gave someone a headship, or I, 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 I gave you the stewardship of my child. That's tangible. Do you understand? So that's the first difference. This is tangible. Why Oikonomos has to do with the stewardship of intangible things. Things you cannot see. You can touch. Intangible. That's the word ohikonomos. Are you following what I'm saying? The first one has to do with tangible. The second one has to do with intangible. Now, the second thing is that apart from ohikonomos being intangible, it also contains the tangible. Meaning that ohikonomos is a bigger word than epitropos. How, how would you understand it? Somebody say, I like cars. The other person says, I love Benz. What's the difference? One is specific. One is wider. Benz is also a car, right? But he's saying, no, I don't, like, I don't love cars. I love Benz. Somebody say, I love chicken. The other person say, I love food. You understand? Now, food comprises even of chicken. So, economos comprises both tangible and intangible things. You understand that? What epitropos only concerns the tangible things. Do you understand what I'm saying? Every time, so in the scripture that we read, that we started from, you remember where we started this journey from? Where did we start from? First Peter chapter 4 verse 10. It's a memory verse, you must know it. What does it say? As each one as received gift, let us minister one to another as good stewards. Of the, the word stewards used there is the word oikonomos. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. You see, why is this important? Because anytime we talk about kingdom stewardship, people think we talk about money. Ah, they want to collect our money. They are coming to tithe. That's tangible. But oikonomos, as good stewards, of the manifold grace is talking about something broader and something bigger than that. So what God is asking you, now let me explain again to you that word of economics in a way that you would also understand. It. Now I gave him the car, right? I said, go with the car for, I'm going to see you in four days. Right? What if I now say, 
They all say, come to my house and you are going to be the steward of this house because I'm leaving and I leave. I am putting these hands, both the tangible things in the house, both the intangible things in the house, so that even prayer, even friends, even the way they do things in the house, everything, I have made him the manager of everything. That's what it means. It's bigger than the car. It contains the car because the car is in my house. Do you understand that? But what he's saying is that everything in the house, the economy, so that I can't come back and you say my children are hungry because they said they wanted a food. And you say the food is not in the house. You have the money, so you can also what? Go and buy what they need. So it's more. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it is. So when God is saying, this is what I'm giving you. And God is saying, you've got stewardship. God is saying, you become the household manager. Not only of the tangible things in your life, which is finances, which is uh, tangible things, your clothes, your finances. Uh, give me tangible again. Your possessions, your resources. God is saying, you are also the manager of the intangibles. The callings of God upon your life. The endowment of God upon your life. The giftings of God upon your life. You are responsible. So when we talk about stewardship, we are speaking more than I pay my offering. More than I pay my tithe. We are also talking about the intangibles. Time. Life. Do you understand that? So do you understand the difference between the two? Do you understand what scripture is saying here? So let's define stewardship. Have your seat, guys. Thank you. What is stewardship? You didn't want to go with it. Give it to me. Glory to God. Alright, so what is stewardship? The definition of kingdom stewardship is the divinely authorized responsibility for believers to faithfully note the word divinely authorized. That word authorized is from the word authority, which means it's delegated power. Do you understand that? Divinely authorized as for believers to faithfully oversee the protection and expansion of the assets, which is time, talent, and treasures, God has entrusted them to manage on his behalf. So look at everything God has given you to manage on his behalf. Everything. That means your time, your talent, everything. You are supposed to faithfully oversee the protection. Two key, first definition, two things are key. You are supposed to, number one, faithfully oversee the protection. And number two, oversee the what? The expansion. So it is not just that I am keeping what God has given me. It has to also be for profit. Do you understand that? Are, are we still together? Are we still in church? You know, there is a danger of people keeping notes on their phones. When you see them, you can't even tell what they are using. Are they typing what you are saying or are they somewhere else? If you are with me, say amen. If you are not with me, say hallelujah. When you trap people that will be hallelujah, say, they just think they say hallelujah also they that means they're not following. Now, number two definition, which is what I want to use as definition for this. Number one, number two, it is the process of taking responsibility onto profitability for an endowment, a calling, a gifting, or a specific assignment. It is the process of taking responsibility. Onto profitability for an endowment, a calling, a gifting, or a specific assignment. You will see that in that definition, I emphasize in capital two things. That's the word responsibility, and what second word? Profitability. God wants you responsible for the gifts he has given you. God wants you responsible for that gift. How many of us remember the story of the ten talents, guys? 
You remember the story? One was given how many talents? Five. The second one was given how many? Two talents. And the last guy was given how many talents? One talent. Now, the guy that God said was an evil servant. What did he do with one talent? I, you see, that is protection. That's taking responsibility. He said, I thought it was a wise thing he did. He actually said, see, so that they will not steal this thing. Let me put, what do people bury? In Nigeria, people bury money. Is that not so? You bury treasure. Uh, diamond. You don't keep diamond just anywhere. You, you bury it or keep it in the safe. It means it is treasure. It is something that is of high value. So the guy knew that this guy's thing is of high value. He kept it. Kept it safe. He took responsibility that this thing cannot spoil under my guy, under my nose. So he kept it. Which you call responsibility. For God said responsibility is not enough. It's unto profitability. He said even if you had saved it in the bank, something would have been done. Unto profitability. You see, many of us think that in as much as I am a good believer, in as much as I, I don't sin, in as much as I take responsibility for my salvation, it's enough. But God is telling you today, it's not enough. Will I go an empty handed? Will I meet my Savior so? Not one soul with we to meet him. Will I empty handed go? Would you go an empty handed? Not one soul to meet your Lord. You are not profitable. You are not fruitful. God is saying that is not okay. It's not okay to be in the bar, in the sweet by and by, enjoying life where your other friends are in sorrow and in pain. And you say, a wolo come in. God is saying that's not profitable. I've not given you call. I've not gifted you so that you can protect it. Taking responsibility. You know, for somebody who is a music person and has the call of God, you know that if you have that gift, it's been given unto you. To take responsibility is to do rehearsals and to do voice training. That's taking responsibility. And they do all of that. You get? And somebody say, ah! And then, ah! Say, ah! And, then, ah! and then they keep sustaining. Don't worry what I sound like. And they keep sustaining themselves. It shows that I'm not called to that. You understand what I'm saying? So, and they keep doing that. Imagine you now see that person. After 20 years and say, how far? Have you? I'm still doing training, no? I'm still doing training, no? I'm responsible for this gift, no? <laughs> and then the guy starts, you know how they pray in tongues with in chatting. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. And he says, What are you doing with this? I'm still practicing. I'm still training. You know, a, a, a man must show himself approved by training. I'm getting prepared. After 30 years, I'm dead. When he gets to heaven, God will not greet him for taking responsibility. God will tell him that you are wicked because I have not called you unto responsibility but unto profitability. Profitability. Kingdom stewardship is unto profitability. Listen to this. You have the responsibility to use what God has given you. Many of us look at the gift God has given us as it is not. As if it is not. I remember those days, many years ago, they carried us together and said they want to teach us drums. And Young boys, I sat down and I started learning how to play drums. And then one, and then leg, oh. And then the guy said, Now, after this leg, your hand must not stop going. I said, Eh? He said, This one must not stop. This one must continue. I said, And then, is it no, you are missing it? I said, Ah, uh ah. -uh. Okay. And then people will do one, and the others will learn it together. He said, This one, just forget it. It's supposed to be going out to read him. I said, Which read him? My mind must be there to control. He said, No, that's not how it works. He has to control it. Needless to say, after three weeks, all of them have gone to combine it. I was still on. I knew at that particular point that this one is not my calling. What am I trying to say? Some of the things you think, are, you think is easy for you, are it's easy, it's common. Are not common. The ability to look at a house or enter a church and say, This is not right. This is not right. This can be better managed. You look at a space and say, I 
can create something from this space. That ability is given by God. It's not common. It's not common. If it is common, every house will be kept. If it is common, everybody will be able to do it. It's not common. Somebody say, how do you know that gift came from God? Susan, come. I want to ask you a question. You know you sing well. Glory to God. Amen. If you don't think he sings well, I've said, Alex should come and lift the song up here. <laughs> and you know the service will end. But Alan is even better. It's his tribe. If you say Obina should come, he will get to slide three before you even know that that's the song he's singing. Now listen, I want to ask you a question. When your mom was pregnant for you, was there a market they went to buy this gift of singing? Because I feel some of us, our parents were not wise to go to such markets. Do, do you, was there a market? <laughs> did you buy it? You did not buy it. So how come you can sing? No, how, I'm, I'm serious. How come you can sing? We are preaching together. They are recording you. How come we, you can sing? You probably just started singing and discovered that you, people started telling you you sound well. But when we started singing, they started telling us to keep quiet. Am I speaking your mind? They started telling us, ah, no, no, no. Carry, carry the microphone away from that guy. But they were pushing the mic to your own side. And you did not purchase it. You didn't do anything. If you did anything, it's just to improve what you already have. So it shows me that that was not yours. Somebody gave it to you. Do we agree? Do you agree? If God gave her, then she's accountable to God. The first principle of, of stewardship means that you have nothing. You are a manager of all that God has given you. You are the oikonomos of all that God has given you. And because you are the manager, you are also going to give an account. Somebody following what I'm saying? Responsibility, I said to this, is the process of taking responsibility onto profitability. Now, responsibility is the state or act of being accountable for something. That's what responsibility is. In fact, do you know responsibility is from that word response to ability. The right response to your ability. Responsibility. The right response to your ability. What's the right response? To the fact that you can cook. What is the right response? To the fact that you are a theater person. What is the right response to the fact that you can code? I remember the, my wife tells me I want to code. I can never want to code. What am I coding? The first time I saw that thing, X, Y, C, P, and the guy put, just press that thing, and the thing went down, and the S, F, and then he took me to a page. And then the, I saw pictures. I said, hey? Oh, no. Oh, the way my mind processes things, I, I want to understand what I am saying. I don't want to get to another page to see it. So nothing you have. Many people have tried to learn these things. They can't. That is not from God. What is the response to that ability? Responsibility is not enough. We must get into fruitfulness and to profitability. And that's the parable of the talent. Matthew 25. 14 to 30. Listen, status quo is not good enough when the job is to create growth. Status quo is not enough when the job is to create growth. The reason your company is where it is, the reason you are where you are, the reason this church is where it is, is because of lack of stewardship. Appropriate stewardship. Appropriate stewardship. Jesus will not be pleased if all you have is to remain stagnant in every area of your life. And as I close, as I close, let me break it down to how it affects you. Because this is a journey. Let me break it down to how it does what? 
Remember the definition? I said, responsibility unto profitability for an endowment, a calling, a gifting, or a specific assignment. So, areas you must take stewardship of. The areas you must take stewardship of. Because the Bible says, what is 410, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10? As each one has done what? As received gift, even so minister. As good stewards of the manifold gates of God. What I want to tell you at first the gift, because you first of all must know the gift. Right? Before you are able to minister. Listen to these areas you must take stewardship of. Number one, your life. Look at him and say, take stewardship of your life. <laughs> Do you know that that is God's most important asset that he has given to you? I tell people that this is different from Nollywood. This is different from Hollywood. If you die here, you are gone. You know, in Nollywood, if you die in a movie, you can still show in another movie. But if you die here, you are gone. This container is what you need to function in this world. If you misuse this container, no matter how anointed you are, you are gone. That means your assignment is done. Even if it's that chapter one, it is done. Why is this important? Because many of us are reckless with our life. Very reckless. That is why I don't let some people drive me, especially when we are traveling. When I say I don't trust people, I say I know. You don't cast out devils and let some people drive you. Because when the devils are looking for you, they will come through them. You must be careful the way you live your life. Are you following what I'm saying? The way you live your life. Look at you. You have a headache. You have headache and you are tired. And your response, you, your response is parastamol and monster. You know what monster is? It's energy drink. Because you are tired and you need energy. What you are doing is that you are solving a problem now. But you are starting a problem for the future. You see, our response at certain times is to solve now while we live the future with problems. What's it? Your liver with you. Do you know how much sugar are in those energy drinks? Do you know how much cafe are there? When you mix those things with pasta, more what you are taking is poison. Poison. And a generation is killing itself because they are tired. When you are tired, you should sleep. Now, let me talk to the ignoramus who believe because they have led and listened to a lot of motivational speakers. Or motivational speakers who tell you, who tells you, and they come and say, you know what? If you sleep for eight hours in a day, by the time you are 75, you would have slept for one third of your year. 25 years of sleeping. Hey! Hey, Odana, because you are also thinking, how will I sleep for 25 years of my life? When they have taught you to aspire and perspire. Now listen, and listen very closely. It is those who reach 75 that sleep for 25 years. If you die at 40, you will not have slept at all. Listen, man, and you see, it has almost become a thing of pride in this generation, especially. I, I slept 4 p.m., I slept 4 a.m., I didn't sleep at all. And people, you look at them and say, Don't, don't. They are dying. They are dying. Medical science have told us. You see, because many times when we talk about life, people think it's only about those who take a call and all of those things. You see, medical science have taught us that if you, a man needs six to eight hours of sleep for proper function of your brain. That is why sometimes you have what you call brain freeze. You are just there. The thing has stopped. You are, mm, for like me, they say, what's up? What's up? Fine. I've been there. I have been there. Where we make decisions that we think are right, but we are stupid. If we have slept, we would have made better decisions. The 
money is going? Do you think money raised the dead? Let me say this to us. The way you live, if you can, and this is medical science, this is medical church, some of these people understand medical science. Now listen to this. If you live your life, and in the age of 20, your 20s and your 30s, you do not have any medical crisis, the chances of you living LD and living long is very high. But the way decisions are made now, you will crash. It's not, you don't need a devil. You have become the devil by your perspective of time and life. Ah, no entrepreneur, I'm building something. Oh God, now your grandchildren go finish up. You've got to sleep. Even God rested. Who are you? No, because the way we behave, we behave like we're bigger than God. Who are you? Who you be? You see, we have to tell ourselves this sincere truth. You've got six. I have told you this. You know, some people say, you are sleeping through the night. You are supposed to be praying. That's... Listen to this. When you sleep two hours, after seven days, the kind of nightmares you'll be having, it's, and it's medically tested that it is not even the demon. It's because your body is not at rest anymore. I said, I just slept again. Hey! It should only, the devil is not chasing you again. He's with you. You guys are neighbors. Decisions. Jesus said there are 12 hours to work in a day. Tell God, tell that fox. I, see, I don't have a problem with people not sleeping. I found it problematic that we have now made it a thing of a thing of pride. That's the problem. The mindset in this generation. You, you see, it's, it's a thing of pride. And they sleep. See, yeah. the hard working guy. I say he doesn't mean he has money. He does rubbish. Why not rest and leave it to God? Do you think it's effort? I'm not asking you not to work out there at 12 hours to work in a day. Let me tell you the truth. Nobody can work for 20 hours for seven days with the same optimal efficiency. It's not possible. No brain can get it. Let some of you come to church. And I still watch. Come to church, you are sleeping in church. Because you came to church, five, you slept 5 a.m. to come to church. You should stay at home because that's not preparation of the heart for the that's not. Still, look at your name and say, still worship of your life. If you have an idiot driving you, you don't have a car yet. Somebody is driving you. And you see the speed. You have not got it to where you are going to. Drop. Tell him I'm not going again. Look at the fool that killed people in, in, just in the Kedja here. A train, a train was coming. You saw the train. People were shouting in the stop, stop, and he moved. And all their common said, It is not a shoe, it's not a shoe, it's people who don't understand life. Some are driving you, are saying, Ha ah, ha, sweet guy, or oh, God, drop. If you would check where you are going, trek, it's better to be alive than to be sorry. The stewardship of your life that's why I tell people, You are taking a call. Can I ask you a question? Do you want to see your children? Children? Do you want to see your children? Do you want to see your children? Do you want to see your grandchildren? You know, when you look at people like Ademide's children, I start saying, Ah, will be marry. Really? You know, when your mother was going to get married, we really did not have so much. I, I think I gave her a car. For, uh, you are getting uh, yes yes daddy uh, I don't know is the streets in Lagos better now daddy it's, it's better thinking of getting you a Ferrari just to your you know God has blessed us I mean what do you think ah come in on I mean we are not taking it to heaven have you my daughter don't you think it's better for you to become that kind of grandpa, you must have kept your life now. Kenneth Copeland is in his 90s. He's still going to South Africa doing and preaching sermons. But he doesn't eat junks. He has, he has stopped eating junks for a while. You don't eat home cooked food because you don't have time. 
It's just maggi sugar, maggi sugar everywhere. You know some of this food that they sell outside, they actually put sugar inside to make it sweet. No, I'm not lying. Ask chef. He said, chef, he will tell you. They put sugar. He said, I don't take sugar. And you are eating outside. He said, you don't take sugar. You are taking sugar already. That's the truth. Because you people will not take it. If it's not sweet, you will not take it. So, can you see the stewardship of your life? Can you see how it's important? It is those who are alive. And you see, you have to take all economies of this. This is my life. That's why I don't marry. I cannot, somebody say, who will you marry? It was sure for me the kind of person to marry. Because all economies, my life. What are you saying? I travel, sometimes I come home say, I remember one day I traveled, came from Lagos, was in Lonnie, she had already cooked the food. I opened it and started eating, without prayer. Oh, he could no more. See, if I had married wrong, they poisoned me, I die. You are sleeping naked beside a woman. She just grandmother and stab you and say, okay, oh, that's the end. Oh, he could no more. In my house, two persons were fighting. Hey, that want to go out. No, you can't go out. And the man went, took knife. And stabbed her till death. And stayed there. No, she, he didn't run. In front of the daughters. This is not super story. I saw it. What do I call it? It's better to be alive or married. If somebody can kill somebody like that, do you know how what she has been experiencing before that death? Oikonomos. Look at your neighbor and say, Oh, Oikonomos. Ah, take responsibility for your life. Number two, your endowment and giftings. Spiritual gifts and innate skills. Why not purchase? That's why I asked her. The she purchases said, No, take responsibility. Some of you, what you can do in this church is much, but no, nothing you will do. You are not called to be responsible, you are also going to be defined by your profitability. There's a scripture in Revelations. They say, Reward them according to their work, not according to their ministry. It's your work that the Lord rewards. It's what do you do? Oh, you know, I have a gift of counseling. I understand Bible. And people are in the church who need counsel. And you are seated. Oh, economos. Lack of responsibility. Lack of responsibility. I don't know how people do it today. They are very comfortable. Do you know? I've, I've told that before. Do you know how many times I fasted and sought, that, and sought the face of the Lord to be able to sing? Do you know how many months I've prayed, fasted? I say, oh God, oh God, this anointing needs the spirit to carry it. God said the spirit is there. I say, I need the spirit of music, sir. The spirit of music. When I come in, I will not be wearing all these black suits. It's white I'll be wearing now, like Benny. Hosanna. You know, Hosanna. Come on, somebody there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And God said to me, oh, I won't give you. After much praise, I won't give you. And some of you have it. And you do nothing about it. I feel like saying, because of how much I've gone through, and all I went through, and they say, I will not have it. Shame on you. Why? Because you do nothing about it. Some of you are giving the gift of prayers. Nothing. Nothing. You are so comfortable sleeping. But the day that you need something, that's when you now start praying at, at night. Ele, ele, ele. The reason you are doing ele, ele now is because God knows you are selfish. In fact, it's not supposed to be ele. It's supposed to be ole, ole, ole. Because you are a lazy person. How are you stewarding the gift of your life? How are you stewarding? You know that's the word endowment. I didn't work for. How are you stewarding it? Some people get paid to do many things in church. It's not bad to pay, but they've received their reward. 
You see, there is he that rewards. And his reward, he said, I come quickly and my reward is with me. And the word is with me to pay everyone according to their works. According not to their ministry, to their works. You can sing. Not throughout a week. You have not done rehearsal. You have not. In fact, you take code. As, as you are taking ice block, you are taking chocolate, you are taking um, 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 sorry, I, this one must not go. ice cream, and all of That's what you take. The, the ororo is not, the oil is not making the voice to go out. And down. Number three, your callings. How many of us have a calling here? Raise your hand. No, you have a call. Raise your hand. Stand up on your feet. I'm not joking. Stand on your feet. So I've got a call. People are displaying in this church. Yeah, everybody was calling. Everybody, just, uh, uh, glory to God. How did you shut your eyes? Pharmacist, is your call to pharmacy? Somehow related. God does not need pharmacy because He heals people. You understand? Your degree in school, your course in school is not your calling. Your calling is what God called you to be. Now wait. Do you know that the call of God, what you need, the first thing you should do about the call of God is not to receive the call alone. Can I tell you what you need to do is to take responsibility for the call. The first thing about a call is responsibility. Dear friends, you can stay like this for hundreds of years and nothing will happen except you. So has he called you an evangelist? Or which of it is yours? You are standing up too. Are, uh, answer me. I don't want this sermon to more than two hours. Who will not listen to you? Are keeping us. Have an answer. Teacher. <laughs> okay. How many people have you taught last month? How many people did you teach? Paul, sir. Which one is it? Ah! But I'll be believing God for prophet and evangelist in this time. True prophet and evangelist because they are the ones that who holds the man to bring back the revival and renewal we need in our generation? What have you done about it? You are wearing white today. What have you done? Spreading messages. How many people have you spread messages to here? No, wait. Don't display yourself. You know what's going on here? Is that his prophetic ministry will increase 100%. The moment he takes full responsibility and say, this is Oikonomo. This is my life. I am responsible for this and I'm going to give an account one day. It increases the way he sees it in his head. It increases the price he pays even for that office. It increases even how he gets away from distractions because he knows that this is an heavenly calling. First thing we all need to do here is to take responsibility. I didn't say you should go. Is take responsibility for the call of God. It's not just I God has called me. It's to take responsibility. What am I going to do? I am responsible even for the outward and the physical manifestation and expression of this call. God is not the primary person responsible. You are. All of you. You are. It's going to remain as just potential except you dig it. And start doing something about it. Millions are still untold. Millions are still untold. Hundreds are still dying. And going into an ageless eternity. An eternity. An ageless eternity without Jesus. And we are comfortable. Very comfortable. 
very cold. Some of you will still beg you to come to church. And you've got a call. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? Have your seat. Kingdom still. You can go. You are responsible for what you do with God's calling upon your life. You are responsible. You are responsible. No matter how bad this is, you write that down. I am responsible for the calling of God upon my life. Write that down. I am responsible for the calling of God upon my life. I am responsible. Until I took responsibility for it, nothing happened. Number four. What are you supposed to take stewardship of? A specific assignment. If even at your place of work, you are given an assignment, you take it as oikonomos. In the church, an assignment is given unto you. Take it as oikonomos. This is God giving me a specific assignment. I take responsibility for it. So somebody is in charge of a unit. You are not just maintaining the two people they gave you. You are looking for profitability. How do I increase these people? How do I make it more? How do I make it larger? That is still watch. Specific assignment. God, you and say from today you will be in charge of, of the sound. From today you will be in charge of the children church. From today you will be in charge uh, even of, of, of technical. You will be in charge of all the visual. What do you do? How you call the Take responsibility. Not only for the physical, but for the intangibles. Ideas. It's not until 30 minutes to serve you. Now start thinking, what do we do? How do we do this? How do we do this? No! Throughout the week, idea come, you are writing it down. What about getting in touch with that person? How about let me the person know? That is how to take responsibility. Listen, believers don't increase even in their place of work because they don't take stewardship of assignments given to them. You should be the best. If difficult task, they should be thinking, let's give it that guy. Let's give that guy. He's going to think about it. He's going to make it work. Number five, your work. Takes the worship of your work. Your mindset towards your work and productivity is key to success in life. Your mindset towards your work is very key, very important. You go to work late. What kind of steward are you? Remember those days I used to resume at work. My God. I don't even have closing hours. I'm there before it. I'm there. Break period. I don't take it. Why? Because I am taking responsibility or economos of that place. What's your attitude to work like? You just do the BRS minimum and get out. You, you know this Yoruba thing that they say or something the way they say it. so you, you whether you, they are profitable is not your concern your concern is that they will pay you your salary at the end of the month you must go beyond the call of duty you must do all you can just like it is your business because one day you will also have yours and life is a seed whatever we sow we also will reap God is not more Galatians chapter 6 tells us that What's your mindset towards work? Look at you. You've been believing God for promotion. But listen, even vocationally, you have not improved yourself. You are still where you are, where you used to be. Why not learn something new? Why not engage something new? What happened to doing masters? What happened to getting a certification? What happened to those things? And then number six, your time. Best use of your time is spent to accomplish the will of God. Will of God. You know, some people, you give them assignment, they say there's no time. I've discovered that there's nothing they tell you to do, for instance, from the church, that will take you more than 30 to 40 minutes. But no, we will not. Because we don't understand the economics. How do you spend your time? I tell people that God demands 10% of your time. That's two hours, 40 minutes every day. 
in fellowship, in reading the word. You can either spend it as a whole or spend it where you break it down. But you know, we are such a generation that we don't even have an hour to give God. You labor to even get 30 minutes for God. I'm so busy. Do you know that business has become a God in this generation? We've deified business. It's become a God we worship. People just say, I'm busy. They just throw that word around. I'm busy. I'm busy. And I've discovered they are busy doing nothing many times. Busy. Busy. Like, it makes us feel cool. It's like a, it's like a jewelry we wear. A perfume we wear. Busy. You, know, you buy perfume. Busy perfume. Po, 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 po. Busy. So, everywhere you go, people see it around you. Oh, busy. Oh. It's busy. Oh. That's what they smell. It's busy. Oh. It's busy. Oh. But that's, that's not life. Your time. How do you spend your time? Recently, oh, my wife knows I watch Manchester United. I may not watch any match. When it's Manchester United, I watch it. I think it was on Thursday. We were showing Manchester United. Started the match by nine. I was very angry. Every other person has started at own seven o'clock. Why we start at one nine? The match will finish by eleven. Ha! Ah, no, it's not wrong. It's wrong. When the first half had finished, I told you, I said, I'm going to see. But they started late. I'm going. The next day, I watched the whole match. Two minutes. Highlight. Oh, 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 oh. The key things in the match, they've shown it. Time. Time. If you don't plan your time, they will plan it for you. If you don't plan your time, you will never have time to do things. Never. And you see, when you talk about time, let me tell you that one of the ways to manage your time is to be able to use the gift of no. Many of you are so nice that even if a dog asks you to, that you should walk him, you walk him. If a dog comes in your name and says, walk me, I'm tired, you walk the dog. Everybody that asks you for something, you are saying yes. Yes. That's why you go to club. That's why you, because you can't say no. You don't want to go and drink, but you have to follow them because they ask you and you are not the one paying. Free money will kill you. you see, that's, that's why you see, that's, that's it. A wolf. You just like it. That's why you don't, you have to take, this is my life. This is my time. It is where you And finally, chapter 5 verse 16 says, redeeming the time for the days are here. You see, the road of I don't care leads to the house of Adai I don't care. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> your mates are getting married. I don't care. I don't care. Wait. When you are 45 and you got married at 45, I can assure you under God. You regret it. Because by the time you are taking your child to register in primary school, my, uh, me, I'm calling you and I'm saying, talk. I'm going, for, I'm going to uh, convenant. It's convocation. And you, you are just registered in primary school. So that even though you can afford the best schools, your son is praying, Lord, don't let daddy die. Because he knows that if you die, who has finished? Why is that? Because you are not doing the things you are supposed to do at the time you ought to do them. There is a time where it is a testimony that I build a house. There is a time it's not a testimony. Have you discovered that when people build houses at 65, they don't even tell people. They don't move there. But when a 40-year-old build a house, he invites his friends. Ah, no, let's just come and celebrate God. Hallelujah. They can even call it. Uh, be to come and be singing. But when that's 65, you just enter. I remember when my dad, my dad finished his house. What can we in? You all entered. <laughs> Even all of us were not. I never slept in that house for, for one day of my practical year. So when they say, you have a room, I don't know what they mean by you have a room. Because when I needed the room, they didn't have the house. <laughs> Do you understand? See, so there, there, is a, there is a time. There is a time. Marry, marry, you say no. Nah, nah. I enjoy you boys. And you boys see each other. You are still taking sugar. You are taking sugar outside. You, you, you go and buy rice cook with sugar. You will now use sugar to drink it down. You see? You see? Some of them are looking at each other and saying, <laughs> Your time. 
Let me say this. This is the last thing I want to say about time. Let me say this. Do you know that the salary you have paid is for the skill exchange in time? The salary you are paid is for the skill exchange in time. Your value in time. That means that you came and resumed by eight. And we are taking all of your productive hours from you. What, what they are paying you for? Time. Somebody say I should not have come to church today. You came. And you have come, you have come. Finally, your money. I don't even want to talk about money. Because I didn't want this message to be about money. You have to take stewardship of your money. I made 10 million last year. Glory to God. What do you have today? Same young man many years ago. First thing he saw me, he was very sick. First thing he saw me, he said, Sir, don't let us deceive ourselves. Building is here. A whole property. They have drank it. I've drank it. I've drank it. Somebody look at me and say I'm rich. I say I'm not. Oh, the the, the highest, most expensive drink I bought in my life is one thousand naira wine with glass. That's all. You know what you do. Can you be taking? There's this one they say is sweet, self. Help me in this church. They say it's white, it's foams like milk. You know it though. <laughs> but nobody wants to say it. Thank you. <laughs> now, you take Bellis. I, I, I don't know what he said at the back. Maybe Amarula Amato. I don't know. Amarula Amatos. Am, I don't know. Now, you buy Bellis. Boy, sit down. And finish that drink. And then they go back and keep hustling. I don't understand how you. These days, I even hear that a bottle of Buddha is about 600, 700. A jaw. And people will finish 10. 6K. Just like that. That's how my head is thinking. 6K. Even if you don't have money, they won't give you money to start a business, but they will buy a drink for you. And you know what I have discovered that the association of drinkers do? That they have what they call investment. Meaning that the day you don't have, they will buy for you. When your money comes, you are repaying the investment. Because all this drinking, you are drinking free. Your time is also coming. You see how people spend money. Somebody like you who only makes, you collect 120k, you are saving up to buy air of 150,000. You can share. Something's wrong with you. I'm sorry, but I'm telling you, with an, I'm sorry, but that is it. How? How can you be working? Some, there are things people give you. Money. You are supposed to sell it. I'm telling my wife, if somebody today look at me, and bless me with a formatic GLX 2020. God forbid that I drive it. My God forbid. I am not there yet. Small time is and we just caught like this. They'll be telling me 250k, 300k. Before that happens, I will sell it. I will tell the person, is it my home? I am the owner. It's my home. Is you say yes, I say thank you so much. Lord bless you. Tomorrow I buy Toyota Camry. Toyota Camry, the change on it, I invest. I invest. This is how to live. I remember when I wanted a smartwatch. I went to Tosin. I said, Tosin, how much did they say? Ah, he told me the price. I said, Eee. Ah, me, I did like I like good things. I said, wow. Then I thought of it, thought of it, thought of it, thought of it. I said, what does he need to do? Check your heart rate. What does he need to do? Check your sleep. What does he need to do? He called. The hand pain in you, no. Okay, so what else can he do? Then I told myself. <laughs> and then I told myself, I'm telling you about time. 
Then suddenly, revelation came that Oraimo does smart watch. Went there, but this Oraimo on my way. Better days. See, don't waste your, the way you waste your time comparing people. Now you are looking at my word like it's Oraimo. You didn't know before. I've just delivered you. See, that's the truth. The truth was that some of you are even thinking, ha, ah, maybe it's bigger. You know, Pastor, it's bigger. Stop wasting your time. Many people you think cares about you, they don't care one bit. They are looking for their next meal. Your time, your money, what you cannot afford, you cannot afford. Are you following what I'm saying? I told my I need a new iPhone because my battery is going down. But every time I see iPhone 14 and I see the price, my mind cuts because I know I'm not buying it. It's never going to happen yet. Are you following what I'm saying? It's never going to happen yet. I've got school fees to pay. Are you following what I'm saying? I don't want to change my salmon so that you people can say, oh, you know, <laughs> one thing about stewardship is that your money, <laughs> your money, <laughs> have you paid your tithes? I don't want to change my salmon. When you see people change their salmon, it's greed. Sometimes it's greed. It's greed. Are you following what I'm saying? Some of you came to church for me to tell you that you are a very greedy person. I hug some ladies, I touch their hair. Ah! I even tell them, I say, Mm-mm. this is in room. This is, this is. <laughs> And I tell my wife, she tells me, even sometimes when I encourage her, I say, buy this. I say, ah! Oh! She will not mention it to me again. But she knows that this one will down and she wants me to. <laughs> you are not buying. But will a day come? That we'll be able to afford that, yes. Life is in stages, men and in sizes. The stewardship of money. Listen to what the Bible says. It said that steward that was given to, and he did it well. They gave him back double. If you have not passed in mormon, money, how will you pass in another thing? In this series, I will teach you how to know whether you are. The, whether the God you have, the God of money, you will do it to test yourself. You will, you will, I'll bring board to church. I was going to do it today. I'll bring board. And you will draw it yourself. You will now see whether it's Yahweh, it's your God, or Mammon. See this. Because what we are pursuing sometimes, God does not even know you are on that race. How can a 30 year old person be having high blood pressure? I've seen twenties. It is what they hit. They called me. One of my proteges had a disease. He was dying. He called me himself. I told him, I said, well, how did this happen? He said I was taking energy drink. What I'm telling you, I'm not advising, I'm telling you from the bitterness and the strength of heart. He was taking because. He had a day constant and he was taking energy drink with Pastor Don't take my word for it. Go and be medical doctors on that. What you are taking is poison. Run away from energy drink. If you are tired, sleep. That company will not die. Nothing is worth it. Everything is in. Ah! Oh, yeah. Bow down your head. Before you go, raise your hand again. Raise your leg. Raise your leg. Finally, the mindset of a king was steward is that of an investor and not a spender. Investors ask and answer two strategic questions. I know there are investors here. Two strategic questions. Number one, what will be the long-term generational kingdom impact of my life in history. What will be your impact? The generational impact of your life in kingdom history. In kingdom history. Number two, what difference will that impact make for eternity? With those two questions in mind, how down your head. Talk to God.
and begin to say, Lord, I repent. I don't know how you've been doing your gifting. I don't know how you have been stewarding your life. I don't know how you've been stewarding your finances. I don't know how you have been stewarding your work. I don't know how you have been stewarding your time. I don't know how you have been stewarding your money. But can you talk to God? Can you talk to God? Can you talk to God? Talk to God. Say, Lord, help me. Help me to do better. <laughs> help me. O economos, I am going to, I'm going to take, I'm, I, both, both, both of the tangible and the intangible. I, because I know I'm going to give an account. I'm going to give an account. That's why we labor this church. That's why I labor. Because I know I'm going to give an account. Not the numbers, the life. Blessed by the word. And a life transformed by the word. Lord. Lord. Look at the relationship God has given you. You've never spoken to anybody about Christ. You've never invited anybody to church. Never did. You're just comfortable. Comfortable believing that, oh, they're going to be fine. And you see them struggling. You see them sad. You've made, you've made that move once. But look at how the Lord is moving your life in this place. Steward in your life means you should, you should talk to people about it. You should, you should ask your friends, come on, let's go to church. You can keep doing this. Because those relationships too, God gave them to you. Nothing you have that is from you. Your skills, your giftings, your calling, your endowment. I mean, there are things we commit to you. Even in this house, see the way you handle them. Oh, economos. Oh, economos. I'm going to do better, oh God. You've got to make a commitment to God this morning. Lord, I'll do better. Do better with my management of my time. The management of my life. I've just told you now. It's, it's not the devil that kills young people. Sometimes young people just kill themselves. I'm going to, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. I'm just going to do better. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better with my life. I'm going to do better with my call. With my call. Whatever that is for you. Whether you are called to the fivefold ministry. Whether you have been given a specific assignment by God. Whether you are called to deliver people from poverty. Whether you are just called to that space. Wherever it is. Wherever you are. Can you just say, God, I'm going to do better. God, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. This, this, this is just supposed to just shake us, move us into alignment. I hope you are aligning in prayers. Don't let anyone distract you. Align in prayers. Align in prayers. You see, this part of prayer too is part of the sermon. It's part of the sermon. You've got to do better. I'm going to do better with my call. I'm taking responsibility. Some of us come to church regularly. And you've got friends who are bad influence on you. You know they don't go to church. You've not spoken up to them about Jesus. And, and you just think Jesus looks at you and smiles. He died on the cross for their sake. He died. And he's giving you the management. He's giving you the stewardship. See, I've committed it all to you. The tangibles and the intangibles. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Oh Lord, I'm going to do better. Oh Lord, I'm going to do better. Oh Lord, I'm going to do better. I want you to look at the tangible gifts in your life. Uh, the intangible expressions. People tell you how coming your influence is. Uh, when you advise them how coming it is. Uh, come on. Uh, you've got to do better. You've got to do better with the gifts God has given you. You've got to do better with the skills God has given you. You've got to do better. You can stop drinking for your future. You can. There's nothing you are getting there. You can. You can. You can. Oh, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. <laughs> Lord, I, I take responsibility for unto profitability. Unto profitability. 
of the teaching grace unto profitability in prayers. In prayers. Some of us believe God has called us to ministry. Let me say this to you. This is not how to do ministry. This is not how to do it. This is not how to do it. This is not how to do it. On to profitability. On to profitability. David said, I will not give unto the Lord that which cost me nothing. It therefore means that for sacrifice to be acceptable, it has to cost you something. We have to be a generation that understands these things. Sacrifice. God has to be number one. He cannot operate any other way. He has to take the best. He doesn't take anything but the first. That's the principle of Titan. That's the principle behind Titan. That's the principle behind the tree of good and evil in the garden. God must take the best. God must take the best. I'll give you my best. I'll give you my all. I'll give you my life. It will cost you something. But God rewards. There is eternity in view. I don't care how old you live. Even 80 years is infinitesimal. It doesn't even count when compared to eternity. It doesn't count when compared to eternity. It doesn't count when compared to eternity. Take responsibility. I take responsibility. I want to profitability, oh God. You have two more minutes. Two more minutes. Responsibility unto profitability. I hope you are having a talk with God. Concerning your time. Oh, all this, I don't have time. Listen, there's a way you rearrange your timer to have seven hours of rest. To have six hours of rest. Yes. Realignment. That's what this message is about. Realignment. Realignment. Still worship is not just about epitropos. It's not just about the physical and the tangible things. It's more about the intangible things. The things we cannot see. The things we cannot see. Le vonu vlende volon vle kesu abaria. Velile lovra de de dovra kalivo sutaya. Mesusu velika da barosa. Go with it. Maliko vilia taba. Kombari bali prokosa bali tayara. I give you my best. I give you my best. Now I know only the best do you want. You will take nothing but the best. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. Some of you, we have to give you ideas sir, concerning the work we have given you. It's because you don't even think about them. You don't take responsibility. Thank you for listening. This has been The Living Word. If you have been blessed by this teaching or for counseling or any other inquiry, kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomedhouse.com or fisayoadenii at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus.